This webcast is for the KSU Offensive Security Club, and I'm Justin Massey, the president. Please follow us on Twitter at KSU underscore offsec. I'd like to thank Terrence O'Connor from Akamai for giving a presentation on botnets July 29th and providing me the material on the Tim Thumb vulnerability. Tim Thumb is a plugin used in some WordPress uh, templates and websites. Uh, it was first found vulnerable in August of 2011. And O'Day was actually found in June of this year. And outdated versions are still found on some active sites and some templates, unfortunately. Today we'll be using uh, Kali Linux as our basic Apache web server with the IP address 10.0.1.71 and the Metasploitable web server running WordPress and the TimThumb vulnerability which is using the IP address 10.0.1.70. So we have a JPEG image uh, running on our Kali Linux server, which is 10.0.1.71. Now, what we're going to do is use that Tim Thumb uh, plugin to resize this image. It's, it's fairly large and can be costly on a web server. So how we're going to do that, we're going to take this uh, take this URL, browse to our Tim Thumb uh, plugin, found here. And now you can see that we haven't specified an image, there's no query string, and this is our Tim Thumb version. And as you know, uh, this is a vulnerable, uh, vulnerable version. So we're going to append at the very end, question mark, source equals our KSU logo. Now you can see here where it uh, resized this logo to 100 by 100. Now this isn't exactly the vulnerable part, is that it does the resizing. The, the issue is, is that it never deleted the original file. Now if we were to take the original source URL, take an MD5 hash of it, we can use this hash, browse to the cache directory inside of WordPress, and we would find our larger image. So since it does that, what happens if we upload a PHP file and will it remove it from the cache directory? So let's give it a try. I have a web shell that I have created also set up on our uh, on our Kali Linux box. Now this is a PHP file and as you can see it has, uh, it's showing the actual uh, shell script. Now what we need to do is get this web server to issue a text copy that uh, of a PHP file, so it's like a server side rather than being the client side uh, version of the PHP file. In order to do that, we have to modify settings inside of our uh, Apache server on the uh, on the Kali Linux box. So, so inside of Kali, we're going to uh, browse to our uh, or site settings inside of Apache. And we're going to modify this file. Now currently our directory var www is where, is where our site is uh, located. And our allow override settings are set to none. Now I'm going to set this uh, to all. This allows an HD access file to override uh, site settings. So I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to restart Apache. Uh, let's see, service Apache 2, restart. All right, so now Apache's restarted with those settings. Now we're going to make a HD access file inside of our uh, site directory, which is already in, var www. And we want to turn PHP uh, off, 
So we're going to do PHP flag engine off. And we're also going to change the PHP type to text. That should just have a that should have a square. Now, the difference is when we load this site. Let's see what we have here. We should get the original script. Now, this is beneficial because when we upload this file, it's going to upload the entire server side script rather than the client side. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go navigate to 10.0.1.70, which is our vulnerable PHP uh, page, or our TimThumb uh, plugin page. We're going to change it to be source equals our file. So now it says invalid source MIME type, meaning that it doesn't have a, an image type, whether it's JPEG or um, GIF or PNG, any of those things. So now we'll do the same thing. We're going to hash our original, our original URL, copy the hash, and see if it is available inside of our cache directory. Append.php, and there we are. We are now, we now have our web script enabled. And we can see it's the exploitable um, uh, server distribution name. This will work for any sort of file, whether it's an exe file, PHP, just as long as uh, the PHP file isn't being rendered uh, by the server side. You can also uh, do this by uh, appending. You, you could take a web. You could take a PHP or a, sorry, excuse me, a JPEG file and append the file, the PHP file, to the end of it. And it should work as well. Now, I'm going to show you how the Tim Thumb script actually works. Now inside, let's go ahead and clear this out. Now inside of, inside of our uh, WordPress directory, you can see Tim Thumb. So we're going to nano into it. You can see here the version number that it displayed earlier, uh, the cache directory, and also the allowed sites. So you can see where I added 10.0.1.71. This wouldn't originally be in your configuration. This is your default configuration. Now you're going to say, well, how can I get you know, a file up if I can't access the vulnerable Tim Thumb page, Tim Thumb file to add on my website? Well, you could, you could buy a website that looked like this. Flickr.com, let's say you change it to com.com. If you were to buy comv blah 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 dot com and append a subdomain Flickr, this would pass the regular expression uh, required. There is very very little input validation or regular expression on it, so this would work. Now, in order to uh, remediate and you know fix this vulnerability, you could do one of two things: you could upgrade update your version to 1.34 or higher. Or you could remove the timthumb.php file in general and switch to another uh, thumbnailing application. If you have any more questions on this, please feel free to comment in the, in the YouTube video link below. Thanks for watching, and please follow us on Twitter at KSU underscore offset.